it's the most complete game Florida State's played since I don't know 2016 Michigan game maybe maybe that's a you know um maybe, all four yeah. quarters all four quarters and offense and defense you know run defense uh stood up well at times pass defense played well we threw the ball we were able to run the ball all four quarters like that you can't ask for much more than that you know um and we haven't seen that in a long time you know uh, a friend of mine said he's like have we seen the offense mm-hmm. execute like this since when i'm like i don't know 2016 15 14 13 maybe it was nice it was beautiful to see mm-hmm. yeah so um the, you know let's start with you know coming in you have you have jackson out on the front line so you're down briggs and jackson coming in you're down renardo green you're down brennan gant you're down miko dotson um so you know coming in you know florida state kind of limps into this game and well i think you and i kind of talked about a little bit earlier this season and one thing i mentioned on twitter is i think that overall we saw better db play with the with the lack of the rotation so I think these guys got a better in game, and I, I think that was you know the end result was, yeah, uh, Phil Longo and Carolina did a good job of scheming, um, you know, downs up in the middle of the field, um, you know, a lot of missed tackles for Florida State today. You know, it wasn't a one hundred percent perfectly clean game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm sure when they go back to the film, they'll see a lot of things that, you know help Carolina extend the plays, but like they were in control for, you know, minus the first eight minutes of the first quarter, nine minutes of first quarter, they're in control for, of this game the entire time. Yeah, we, you know, I think the announcers even alluded to that. We, we were in control of that game, you know, after that second possession from North Carolina, when they went up 10, nothing from there, you know, we controlled the game. We really did. And no, it wasn't perfect, you know, but some of that's just Sam Howell is a playmaker. The kid makes plays. He's a good player and he's, you're not going to hold him down for the entire game. You're just, you're not. And he made some plays. He made some good plays, you know? And um, if that's what you limit North Carolina to, okay, don't let them pass, limit their running backs, but you're going to let Sam Howell run for 130 yards. You'll take that. Like, you're not going to stop everything, um, especially because we do have talent deficiencies. We we have talent issues. We're not a good enough defense to be able to stop everything at all times. So you got to take away what they do. Try to take away what they do well. We did that. We did that. You know, um, you know, the receiver. He, he's a great receiver. Um, that was to be expected. But everybody else, you know. The drops and stuff like that helped as well, you know, not going to lie. That helped us, you know. They made some mistakes. We, you know, especially on offense, played mostly um, pretty mistake-free. And that's not something we've done, you know, so. So, you know, looking at Jordan Travis, back-to-back 100-yard games on the ground, you know, I have been one of the biggest guys that have, you know, complained about Travis, uh, uh, him as a quarterback, and you know, there's there's a lot to be desired about him as a quarterback. Uh, that's a debate, but the kid's a football player, and, mm-hmm. and you know, back to back now, you know, Florida State's put up over eight points with him in the last two starts. Thirty three last week with Syracuse, and thirty five today. Um, you know, it seems like, in my opinion, Norvell and Dillingham called the better game that, that really played with his chance. Yeah, they did, but a lot of that comes by look what we have at the on the offensive line now, and that mm-hmm. helps us yeah. with his strengths. It does, you know. So now we have our five starting offensive line linemen mostly healthy. They're I don't think they're a hundred percent, you know, but they're mostly healthy, the healthiest they've been all season, and all of a sudden we're able to start running the ball, you know, and Jordan Travis. He starts to get, he's getting healthier. He's more of a hundred percent, probably not actually a hundred percent. Like he told the announcers, but he's getting close and that stuff starts to come together. And 
it makes it so much easier on the play callers, you know, on Dillingham and Norvell to be able to be like, okay, you know, people, what were they hammering, you know, a couple of weeks ago? What's our identity? What's our identity? Well, now that we have an offensive line and a quarterback that can run the ball mm-hmm. and two good, very good running backs, that's our identity. And it came out today. Um, so as long as we can stay healthy, mm-hmm. that will be our identity. We'll have that throughout the rest of the season, but we got to stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. So you have four. Yeah, Jordan Travis, 11, 13, 45 yards and three scores. Um, efficient. He had to do in the passing game. Um, you know, Travis had 14 for 121 on the ground for 8.6. Uh, Shoshan Ward, what a great effort run on that last that last run to really seal the game. Um, you know, spins out of it, makes five guys miss, and gets a first down. Uh, he has 12 carries for 77 for 6.4, and Corbin was a workhorse, more so 13, 52 yards of four. So, you know, really played to the strength, took advantage of a, a Carolina defense that just has not done well against the run this year. Um, and, and like you said a few ago, today that run game really set up the that passing attack, um, and, and I, th- I thought they were very well designed plays. Yeah. But, you know, that's what Norvell and Dillingham have showed throughout their history, been able to have game plans like that and be able to scheme receivers open and be able to scheme big plays in the running game. That's their MO. That's what they've always done. Now that we have an offensive line that's healthy and able to execute those plays, now now you start seeing it happen and it looks wonderful. So, Tally R Tally R C here says that they played ahead of the chains most of the day. Um, you know, I think some of that is really missed a lot is, is the ability to knock it in the second and long, third and long situations, and it allows you to really open up your playbook and really get that that flow and that rhythm on offense. Um, you know, uh, I think that's a point by Tally there. Excellent. It's a it's an excellent point because you know the offensive line is not great. Let's let me no, let's not make any illusions like this is some great offensive lineman all offensive line all of a sudden. It's not. Uh, it still has deficiencies. You know, it's great running the ball and in running situations, but we start getting in those second and ten, third and eight plus situations, and the defensive line can pin their ears back we have problems, especially whenever you look at our quarterback, we have problems. So playing ahead of the chains is a huge key. And if we're able to do that the rest of the year, we'll continue to have success like that. But if not, you know, uh, screw you, Kyle. 